Welcome back. Welcome back. Actor John Hanna. He's best known for his roles in Four Weddings and a Funeral, Sliding Doors, and the hugely successful Mummy franchise. Uh, his latest part, though, sees him starring in the US television drama Spartacus. Episode one, Blood and Sand. It's a huge ratings hit in the States, and it comes to the UK, for instance, next week, and then to much of Europe and Latin America over the summer. Here is a quick clip. You have been blessed, each and every one of you, to find yourselves here at the ludus of Quintus Lentulus Batiatus, purveyor of the finest gladiators in all of the Republic. <laughs> Prove yourselves in the hard days to follow. Prove yourselves more than a common slave, more than a man. Fail and die. Either here where you stand, or sold off to the mines. Succeed and stand proud among my titans. Mariotis! 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 Dramatic stuff, and John is here. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. Where was that all taking place? In Rome? No. Uh, in Ca the city's made to be Capua. We shot the whole series in three sound stages in Auckland, New Zealand. Oh, really? I was there for eight months last year. Were you? Yeah, and it creates, uh, doing it in the sound stages with the CGI, it creates that kind of uh, graphic novel look about it. And in this, you are clearly a right bastard in practice. Y could you say that? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I am actually a right bastard in it, which was uh, fantastic to discover because I started with, uh, with only the first episode. As an actor, you get your episode and you say yes or nay and then turn up and start work. And uh, as each episode rolls out, as they come to the actors, you find out what's happening. And it was great. It was a, a revelation for me what, uh, what I get up to in this show. Yeah, yeah and here's... Here's the Washington Post who said, described the series as just about the grimiest, nastiest, bloodiest thing you could hope to find on TV. Yeah. Not, in, not including the news, that is, obviously. Yeah, yeah that's But true. the, I mean, that's, that sounds pretty hard stuff. Yeah, pretty hardcore all the way through. You know, the guys, the fights, um, graphic in its look, graphic in its content. Um, I felt that was sort of real, though. I mean, you're dealing with people who, who, who deal with life and death on a, on a daily basis with no consequences. You know, the way that the Romans viewed slavery was not as some sort of humans who had the same sort of rights as free men. So with these people, they have a, a different morality than we do. And it felt like as we approached this work, one had to kind of jettison the 21st century morality in order to play these characters. And it says here that you all had to sign a nudity clause. What's a nudity clause? Um, I suppose, <laughs> well, there's, there's quite a lot of nudity in it. There's quite a lot of uh, simulated sex, I have to say. Um, and in case anyone was going to feel coy about that, I suppose it's a way of letting the actors and agents know up front that this is what's going to be required. Yeah. And it was required a lot. Actually, by a lot of people. The good looking ones, rather than myself being one of the older members of the cast, I tended to stay clothed a little bit more, you know, yeah. or, or uh, delicately covered by a young slave girl of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's some compensation there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, so, and so, will it go on? If the first series is a wow. Will it go on to a second and third series? Very much so. I mean, the writers are the writers are very uh, cognizant of, of the, the the points in history of, that they know of Spartacus, uh, and there are, as as you're probably aware, a couple of Romans who who wrote of him as a real human being, and they want to follow that story. Um, obviously, there's huge blanks with which they they fill in great amounts of creativity. Um, so, but they are following <laughs> that story in the first season. The first series is up to the rebellion when he, he leads the, the slaves out of Capua and away from, from Rome. And uh, then the second series will, will continue on that. And in fact, Four Weddings and Funeral was probably your first hit, really, wasn't it? Totally, yeah. I mean, I'd had varying degrees of success at the Bush Theatre and things like that, yeah. you know, but nothing that would have uh, put me in the national consciousness. Four Weddings was a, a small part for, for me, but, you know, integral to the story and, and the film was incredibly successful and elevated my profile uh, on a professional level. And was, was a bit of a breakthrough, I suppose, in terms of a man-man of a, uh, relationship? 
Yeah, in as much as in as much as it wasn't anything that was commented on or seen by their contemporaries as being unusual or mm. you know looking at the, the the judgment the other day in Namibia about the the two was it Namibia no Malawi about the two uh, black guys who got married and have just been sentenced to sixteen years in prison for being openly homosexual you know this was. 20 years ago whenever we did four weddings was you know obviously a much more liberal society we have here but but the first time that a gay relationship had been part of a story without even necessitating comment or reasons or excuse or anything and uh, in terms of the uh, the other things you've done what what what's been most important to your career between four four weddings and Spartacus I think I've always try to to avoid being typecast I think I've wanted to sort of maintain a sort of freedom as an artist to attempt things to 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 take challenges and to sometimes fail which I have you know I've never pursued fame for its own sake or success for its own sake and in fact most of my friends most of the actors I know don't you know but however we do live in an age now where people seem obsessed with the idea of being famous or being a celebrity, God help us, uh, for some sort of reason without actually knowing what it is that they want to be famous for. It's never been part of my Well, thing. the the um, the other important development in your life and times, of course, has been that but your marriage to, to Joanna, mm -hmm. you've been married for how long? Uh, 14 years. 14 years. 14, yeah. We've been together for tw uh, 20 years this year. Be twenty years, yeah. Twenty years, right? And you had a a bizarre uh, occasion when you first dated, yes. I was still trying to to endear myself to her at the time, and we were rehearsing at the National Theatre, and we had the afternoon off, and we were going down to heading down to Battersea Park, and um, I had an old Volkswagen Beetle, and she had a um, whatever hatchback, little hatchback or something, and she crashed into the back of me, and. Um, Obviously, I couldn't <laughs> start shouting at her, but there was no damage to my car or anything. Being a good old-fashioned yeah. Volkswagen of the 70s, it was a bit thick as a tank, you know, so it was yeah. fine. And, and and how did you propose in the end? I proposed often, actually, David. Um, did you? Yeah, often. She constantly rejected me. And I, I think I'd sort of given up proposing. And we were, at, we were at dinner one time, we were at a restaurant, and I, I wrote it on the tablecloth when she finally succumbed. Oh, really? And she wrote her answer on the tablecloth, so she never actually verbalised it uh, until much later when we tied the knot. Yes, do you, do you still have that tablecloth? We do, actually. You yeah. do? We do, yeah. Yeah, oh, we've never washed it either. It's still got some uh, curry stains on it, I think. <laughs> Great to have you with us Thank today. you very much. I look forward to coming back for your latest exploits, Thank projects, you. triumphs. I hope there are more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks a million. John Hanna there. The Euro slide continues. So was the IMF wrong to try to prop it up? Find out after this intriguing short break.